Gentlemen, we're back with some great news and some more additional news on tithing. As you have seen, we've talked about parts one, two, three, and now I want to give to you part four. And I said I would come back again and talk to you some more about why I resigned from tithing. As you saw in the introduction, uh, the two introduction slides there, you saw a article for a website that lists why I resigned from tithing in whole. So I will not go into detail why I did it here in this video because we're going to discuss some more issues with tithing. I want to also give you some additional information. So if you go to that link that you saw in the introduction, it will give you my whole story. However, what I will do is I will take a few seconds here, maybe a few moments, and give you some idea of why I resigned from tithing by reading in part a little bit of my letter that I wrote when I resigned from tithing, and it is all for you to view the complete four-page letter that I wrote to my uh, pastor some a year and a half ago. Uh, I will read a portion of this for you and then go into some of the discussion of tithing. Let me start right here, right about now. Biblical history and secular history on this subject is replete with examples of the tithing wars among Christian leaders that have raged over the centuries. Even in our doctorate class, you mentioned us or introduced us to Martin Luther. And when I found out afterwards, I also found out that Martin Luther, uh, the great reformer, did not believe in tithing. So we want, to, we want to talk about that at some point, but not here at this time. Here's a portion of my letter again. Let me make myself perfectly clear. If a person of their free will wants to give 10% of their income to their particular church, uh, which is basically a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, and they do have to follow government rules, so it's a quasi-government organization, church organization, they are certainly well to do so because there is a tax benefit to giving 10% uh, of your income. And so you will get, uh, if you give large sums of money, you will get a bigger increase in your income tax check. So I have no problem with people giving money. I have a problem with people saying that 10% is commanded as a principle, is commanded as a law, it is a commandment from the Bible. It simply is not. If a person wants to do that, they certainly can give their income to the work of the Lord. And of course, that is their decision based on grace and not out of a law or uh, out of fear of a curse ripped from the text, specifically Malachi, and given new meaning. But as soon as giving is called a tithe that's mandated, forced, or becomes a requirement based on Malachi chapter 3 or Matthew 23, or some other dubious implied command from the Bible, it represents poor hermeneutics and also sloppy exegesis. Tithe teachers who hold Malachi 3 to the heads of God people, like a 357 Magnum, and pull the trigger with a curse upon them, have committed the greatest betrayal of grace and the work of Christ on the cross that almost rivals Judas's betrayal of Christ with a kiss. Of everything I witnessed over the 30 years, no one has ever been able to explain why there are ghettos and inner cities still full of generations of tithers who remain one paycheck from the soup kitchen. Okay, I get it. The answer has always been they do not put their seed in the right place. Saying we've been blessed by tithing does not make it true biblically because there are people who tithe who are not blessed. We are blessed because of the new covenant principles of giving not paying tithes. None of the epistles that Paul wrote or the letters written by the apostles instructed or exhorted new covenant believers to tithe, not as a law, a principle, or as a voluntary practice. It is simply not written. It is simply added by people who want to collect additional monies when they only have to do is just say, to the church or to the congregation, here's what we need. We hope that you would feel free to give so that we can finish the work that we have been called to do. Now, I want to go back to some of the things we talked about earlier uh, concerning tithing. 
You remember in Leviticus chapter 27, 30 through 33, I read to you uh, what tithing was. And in those verses, tithing is not, uh, there was nothing in that list called money in that list. Now what I want to do uh, is to tell you from Leviticus 27, 30 through 33, you will notice God never directed who the tithe went to in Leviticus. He just mentioned what the tithe was. He mentioned the contents of the tithe. And as I did in some of the earlier videos, I reminded you that you did not see any money, shekels, or silver in the list. God strictly required food as a tithe. Now, many people believe, as I said earlier, that tithing uh, was, food tithing was a requirement because Israel simply did not have any money and they, money was not predominant. Well, that is simply not true, and I will detail some of that information in the Old Testament. One way to truly understand the Bible on tithing is to study the Old Testament completely on this subject, and you will understand that God never changed his idea of the tithing system in the Old Testament. And you will notice when you run references all the way from the Old Testament to the New Testament, God never instituted a new law or ordinance to change the tithe from crops and cattle to money. There was never a change. God never changed his mind. So what we want to do is now read Numbers chapter 18, verses starting at verses 20, and we're going to find out in just a moment how God exactly directed the tithe in the Old Testament, who it was supposed to go to, when he instituted the legislative system in the Old Testament under the book of Numbers. And remember, in Leviticus, he told him what the content of the tithe was. Now he's going to mention the content and who it was supposed to go to in Israel. So I'm going to get my Bible here, and I'm going to share this with you. Starting at Numbers chapter 18, starting at verse 20, it says, And the Lord said to Aaron, you shall have no inheritance in the land, neither shall you have any portion among them. I am your portion and your inheritance among the people of Israel. To the Levites, remember here, he's talking to the Levites. To the Levites, I have given every tithe in Israel for an inheritance in return for their service that they do, their service in the tent of meeting so that the people of the Lord of Israel do not come near to the tent of meeting, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall do the service of the tent of meeting, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a perpetual statute throughout your generations, and among the people of Israel they shall have no inheritance. For the tithe of the people of Israel, which they present as a contribution to the Lord, I have given the Levites for an inheritance." Therefore, I have said of them that they shall have no inheritance among the people of Israel. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Moreover, shall you speak and say to the Levites, When you take from the people of Israel the tithe that I have given you from them that for their inheritance, then you, pres then you shall present a contribution from it to the Lord, a tithe of the tithe. And your contribution shall be counted as to you as though it were a grain of the threshing floor and the fullness of the wine press. So shall you also present a contribution to the Lord from all your tithes, which you receive from the Lord or from Israel. And from it, you shall give the Lord's contribution to Aaron, the priest. Out of all the gifts to you, you shall present every contribution due to the Lord from each its best part as it is dedicated. Therefore, you shall say to them, when you have offered it from the best of it, then the rest shall be counted to the Levites. Here is what the tithe is, as produce of the threshing floor and produce of the wine press. So as you can see, God directed the tithe directly to the Levites. And then he told the Levites to give a tithe of the tithe to the high priest Aaron. Now, a tithe of the tithe let me explain it this way. The Levites collected a tithe, which is a tenth part, from all of Israel. Israel. Then, once the Levites collected all the tithes from Israel, 
Then the Levites were supposed to give a tithe of the tithe from that tithe to the high priest, Aaron and his family. Now, a tithe of the tithe is this, a tenth of the tenth. It is 1% of the tithe, one part, one tenth of that was supposed to go to the high priest. The high priest did, did, did not get a full tenth. The high priest did not get a full tenth. The tenth or the tithe, the full tithe, went to the Levites. Then the Levites gave a tithe of the tithe, which is the tenth of that, to the high priest. So the high priest got 1%, and the Levites got the tenth. So, as you have heard, many of your pastors today say that they deserve the tenth, but that is not necessarily true. The Levites were the only ones who should be collecting the tithe. Now, if we go to Hebrews chapter 7, I'm going to show you that it has never changed who the tithe went to. If you read Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 5, let me go there real quick to show you. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 5 says this. Let me start at verse 4 to give you some context. See how great this man was to whom Abraham the patriarch gave a tenth of the spoils. You see, Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils, which I discussed earlier in earlier videos with you. He gave a tenth of the spoils to Melchizedek, not a tenth of his personal income. If the Bible was truly, if Abraham was truly giving a tenth of all his inheritance, all of his stuff, it would have added in the book of Hebrews, Abraham gave a tithe of the spoils and his personal private wealth. It did not say that. Now let's look at verse five. And those descendants of Levi who received the priestly office have a commandment in the law to take tithes from the people. Only the Levites had the commandment in the law. That law was not given to Gentiles. That law was not given to anyone else but the Levites. There are no Levites today. So the tithe cannot be collected per se as it is taught in New Testament churches, uh, New Covenant churches today. So here's what we know about the tithe. It is completely and always food from farmers and crop growers. That's who paid the tithe in Israel. As we read in as we read in this chapter, we read in Numbers 18 that it was from the produce of the land, and we read in Leviticus it was the cattle and the crops. That was the tithe. I cannot say this more emphatically. The tithe was edible items. The tithe was given only to the people from the other 11 tribes. The Levites received the tithe because God changed their inheritance from land to crops and cattle. As we read in the text, we saw that it was given to the Levites as their inheritance, not as their wage. An inheritance is something that was given to you by blood. The Levitical priesthood was given to every Levite born in Israel by blood. Every Israelite that was called into the Levitical priesthood was deserving of the tithe. It was by blood. It was by blood. The tithe was given to them by blood as their inheritance, not as a wage. They were not given any land in Israel. They were given as a substitute for land. They were given the tithe. And that is exactly how God arranged it in the text. And I will continue with some of this even more in, uh, in my next uh, study with you. But I just wanted to give you an idea that the tithe is food. The tithe strictly went to the Levites. It was produce, something that you can eat. It was supposed to be for the Levites. And we saw in the text that the Levites 
took a tithe, the best of that that they got from Israel, and gave 1% to the high priest. We'll be back with more information.